Hi friends. Uh, in today's session, we'll discuss on figuring out the historical queries that is being run in Postgres or the long run queries run against any Postgres server. Okay, with that, let's get started. Uh, in this repository path, I have kept the required SQL script and bash commands. So we'll go step by step. Let's go to step one, creating some sample tables. So the first step is create a database called tuning manually, and then create the following tables in the database. I'll copy these commands. Uh, let me go to PG admin and create a fresh database called tuning. I'll let the access be granted to Postgres. Okay, I have got the mm. database created. Now go to query tool, paste the create table commands and run them step by step. Created table driver locations, creating now products table, inserting some sample records in the first table. And these two tables join via product product type, product underscore type column. Okay. All right, so now I have the tables created. If you expand schemas and tables, you will see them. That's the first step. Now let's move on to the next step, which is initiate or you know configure the detection of long running queries or basically any queries for that matter. These are the SQL queries. I'll introduce you to these commands and what is the significant, what are the significance of them? Okay, go back to PG admin and create one more query window. Query tool window. Okay, so let me explain you what are these commands and the significance of them. Alter database tuning set log minimum duration, min duration statement equals to zero. So that's by default. If you see, uh, if I run this, you see the default value is minus one. So be it minus one or zero, they basically mean you want to capture any queries which are run against the Postgres post database. Okay, so what I'll do is just mark, you know, set it at zero for now and then reload the configuration. And let's see if the configuration has take into effect. It's still minus one here until unless I restart the service of Postgres database. We want to see some more configurations. I can look at something of interest for this exercise is where is the config file location? You can see here, where is the data directory and log destination type is csv log so there are a few other types like standard log sys log in our case i'm using csv log so it will create the all historical you know queries being run in csv format we'll see that in a few seconds from now log directory uh, this is a relative directory from this base directory so data directory will be the base under that pg underscore log will have the on log files that are being created. And what are the log file names? This is the format of the log file name, Postgres uh, SQL underscore this dot log format. The most important parameter is logging underscore collector. You can see it is turned on. Uh, I'll show you how to how to you know turn this flag on. Right. So let's go to this conf file and open it in terminal. So you can see log destination is CSV log. We just described about it in the PG admin window, CSV log. And then log directory is PG log, log file name, logging collector. So these four parameters, I have uh, added them in the config file, All right? Let's just save it and uh, this is the 
log file location. So your base directory is still var under var hyphen 14 or var dash 14. You can see that that is your base directory. Under that, you have pg underscore log folder. Okay. So we have a couple of log files. I'm going to clean them up. <coughs> so let's clean them for time being. <coughs> Now I'm going to restart the service. So I'll have completely phrase log and the command for restarting the logs are pasted here. For you, it might be uh, a different path so that you have to figure out in your system um, what is the command to use uh, for restarting your post service. Okay. But this is exactly what we are doing. We're just restarting the Postgres service. We've made some config changes. We're restarting the service. We're done. You can see server started. You can also see in the, you know, immediately some logs will be generated. Next, let's go to step number three. So we want to run some sample queries. Again, let's copy them. I have got two queries and go to pg admin back here create one more query window paste them and run them a couple of times you can run run them separately i've run five six times so let's move on to the next one this also i'll run a couple of times okay i think we have you know run it sufficient number of times. I'm sure they have been captured in the CSV log. Let's go there and let's see what is our fourth step here. Fourth step says, you know, go to your PG log folder and then install some command called PG Badger. This is one nice utility. Uh, I have opened the GitHub location for that utility uh, because I'm using Mac, so I'm going to install using preview install in my case it is all lowercase but uh, be watchful based on your operating system maybe uh, that you know text might vary a little bit okay now it is installed successfully what is the next thing that i'm supposed to do is run this command pg badger and pointing to the csp output file minus f which is type csp minus d which is database is tuning okay so that is the basic command but you know when i ran it first time i faced one issue where the correspond you know one of the required parl model was missing okay? i think they have mentioned it in the badger here yeah this is the utility that you should have installed this is a parl module and the command for installing that is user bin pearl this one okay so let's assume you have installed pg badger you have installed the pearl module required now i'm going to run the pg badger command and the log file look you know name might vary slightly that's fine we'll modify that name here let's press tab csv okay so it's going to generate a nicely formatted HTML. So you don't have to you know, go through that uh, AV CSV file to scan through all the queries being done. Now you'll have very nice HTML file. If you come to top and say most frequent queries, you see a lot of you know queries are being, but this is something you we have not run, right? PG underscore catalog. We only have driver tape you know, locations and another one called uh, product, you know, this one, a3 dot product name, so just correlate, a3 dot product name, right? So those are the two queries we have run, but here you see a lot of other queries being captured. So this is something uh, we don't want to do for sure. All that, you know, to kind of exclude out what we don't need, uh, we have a few other parameters that we are going to append to the previously run command, we keep the base command as is, and I'm going to add exclude exclude query 
So if the query has anything like PG underscore, you see uh, in the report, there are a lot of queries which are having PG underscore catalog, PG underscore setting and whatnot. PG underscore settings, right, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the first part. And the second part is include query. So I know uh, I have created two tables where you now one of the table has the text driver and the table has the table name has the text for product. So I'm going to have those only included and exclude the rest of the things. So the garbage will be taken out. And if I just refresh this, now you can see it's a much cleaner output and you get to see the queries that you have run, not anything else. A3 dot product name, okay. It has taken five milliseconds. So this is ordered based on the max, you know, in descending order. So if it has taken more, you know, duration to finish, that will come higher in the rank. And likewise, so you can see the other query that we have run, it has barely taken any time. So this is down the order. Time consuming queries, total duration 10 millisecond, total duration 3 millisecond. So you can see all the queries that we have run as a user, not the system generated queries. No, whatever user specific queries that have been run, they have been captured well in the log. So this is going to be the foundation that we are going to use uh, to figure out, you know, what are my uh, uh, heavily run queries or what are my queries which are very slow. And this is going to be the foundation on which we are going to go to the next step where we'll figure out, you know, what would be the optimization technique, what would be the partition technique, all those things in the uh, second level. So if you have any you know, comments or uh, feedback you want to share, please do so in the video. Thank you.